Hey guys, and welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Natasha Martinez, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news in the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us today is Christian Harloff. Well, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It's Monday, happy Monday, and we are here today to talk about movie news, and boy, am I excited. Who's joining me today, Natasha? Joining us today is Perry Nemiroff. I am deeply sorry for anyone I confused and made think it was Friday today. It is Monday. I am sorry. <laughs> Also joining us, Mark Ellis. Thanks to all the fine folks who came to check me out at the Tempe Improv this past weekend. And Christian, were you singing the theme song from Welcome Back, Cotter? Uh, I was. I was absolutely. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. You like that? Good for that? all the kids. It was good. a sitcom in the 70s starring Gabe Kaplan and some unknown named John Travolta. Back right. to you. John Roca was 15 years old in that show. <laughs> all right. Well, what's up first? Okay. Up first, in one week, the Super Bowl takes over our televisions. And now Deadline reports that a number of studios are looking to take advantage of all those extra sets of eyeballs. Disney is said to be advertising two films with Deadline believing it will be for Guardians of the Galaxy and Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man Tell No Tales. Fox is expected to advertise a psychological thriller, A Cure for Wellness, and possibly either Logan or Alien Covenant. Paramount will have one slot that will either go to Baywatch or Transformers the last night. Universal Pictures has at least one spot that could be The, fa of, or the, fa the Fast of the, and the Furious, The Mummy, or Fifty Shades Darker. Lastly, Sony Pictures has grabbed one spot for the pregame with Deadline saying it's most likely for another look at Spider-Man Homecoming. The Super Bowl airs on Sunday, February 5th. Christian, what do you think about the potential lineup of trailers for the Super Bowl? Uh, some of it I say predictable, but I'm confused by one. Warner Brothers is not, it looks like they're not going to be promoting anything. Yeah. I don't <laughs> get that. I mean, that, that studio right now I think needs all the, it, right, it's got to promote, it's got to promote, it's got to promote. That's, it, for some reason, it, they're not taking the opportunity, and I guess that some could say, well, it costs five million a spot. Do they really get the benefit from using that money? I don't know, maybe not, but I think that they, they have a few movies, and I'm not just talking about Justice League or, or these other movies that are coming. I'm talking about or Wonder Woman. You know, we, I'm surprised they're not putting Wonder Woman out there mm -hmm. this early. That, that was a bit of a shock. As far as the Disney ones and people are like, are, I've been getting tweeted, are you, are you surprised that Episode Eight is not there? No, there's no reason to put Episode Eight. I think I was a little surprised that they're not going to be doing uh, Beauty and the Beast, but I guess we get a Beauty and the Beast spot tonight with uh, the, uh, Wendy was telling me The Bachelor tonight is going to be doing that, and th that'll be your final trailer, so why waste the money if you don't have to? Pirates of the Caribbean and Guardians... Yeah, I think those are the two movies. You really want to get the eyes on on Pirates. I mean, you have to get the eyes on Pirates because all, that is a franchise that some people were on board for the, for the first three. The fourth one still did okay, but people were like, all right, I think I'm tired of it now. This is a way of them saying, we're back. Here we go. And they're going to show it at one of the biggest audience. So... I get it. Makes sense. Anything else stand out to you? Uh, the one that stands out to me is Fox, actually, because I don't think it's going to be a cure for wellness. It just doesn't seem like they would throw $5 million at that movie, even though it's coming out a couple weeks after the Super Bowl. What I hope it is, is Alien Covenant, because you talk about making an announcement, making a splash. That trailer really hooked a lot of people. If you can keep that momentum going forward, that's a great spot to do it in. The Wonder Woman thing really surprises me, but, I mean, look, it's not like people aren't going to be aware Wonder Woman's coming out when they need to know it's coming out, because Nobody needs to know that Wonder Woman or Guardians of the Galaxy or Episode 8 are movies that are coming out later this year in February. We don't need to know that. I think that this is a, a shift in how people market their movies during the Super Bowl because, yeah, everybody's going to be watching the game, but these movies have so much of an opportunity now with online marketing to make their presence known sooner to the actual release date. So this is kind of a new trend in Super Bowl marketing where you don't have to throw, if you have a big movie, it's not required to put it during the Super Bowl. Something interesting to note, though, is that Adam Driver is apparently mm -hmm. going to be in a Snickers commercial during the Super Bowl. Adam Driver, <laughs> Snickers commercial. Will there be an Episode 8 joke in there? Probably. Probably. I mean, it was Good so, enough for me. Yeah, we'll see. Perry, what do you think? I don't even need that Episode 8 bit. I just want to see Adam Driver <laughs> right. in a Snickers commercial. That's fine. I also really dig this graphic, Remy. I, I want to see that game. I was going to say, know? this right. is the perfect way to promote everything, so job well done there. It really, you hit on the only surprise, and it's that Warner Brothers is not bringing any of their superhero properties to Super Bowl. But again, this article that this was based on was just speculation. Right. For all we know, it's not Guardians and Pirates, and it's something else for Disney. And it's uh, the same thing can be said for Warner Brothers where they still have the opportunity to do promotional partners, kind of like the Snicker things, potentially name-dropping uh, 
name mm-hmm. dropping Star Wars, you could have it's like the they mentioned the the Turkish Airlines thing for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice last year. Right. They could do something similar for Wonder Woman and Justice League this year, so maybe it will have a presence. Overall, I think that might be a smarter move because even though we're all sitting here waiting for these 30 seconds, minute long trailers, the way to keep us talking and keep the conversation interesting to me is to use unique promotional opportunities like maybe a Snickers commercial or a Turkish airline commercial, and then it can at least go viral in a different way than a trailer could, because then they'll still drop a trailer a couple weeks later and people right. still eat it up. Uh, Wendy, so you hear about these potential trailers that are going to hit on Super Bowl. Does any... Oh, there you go. Where's Wendy? <laughs> so I see, this is what I do when I host. I throw Hi. everybody out of whack. Um, yeah, but I want the opinions of both of you guys. So let's, let's hear Natasha and Wendy. You hear about these potential trailers. Do you care about any of them? Yes, because that's the only reason why I watch the Super Bowl. Oh, that's like, fair. I don't Honest. care <laughs> about football, um, but See? yeah, so I all I the care about are, are the trailers yeah. and halftime show. Lady yeah. Gaga. Yes, I mean I'm, I'm I like football. <laughs> I don't care as much for either of these teams that are playing, so it's uh, I'm not like as uh, Mark Ellis is throwing me like. You guys most. have no desire to see if Brady gets a fifth ring to put him He's ahead of Joe oh, Montana well, in the all-time. No. We shall see, but I am right. I am excited to see. Um, it's it's more it's like exciting, you know, to see what these trailers are going to be because we all know it costs a lot of money to have a spot in the Super Bowl, so. Right. Bring it. So they better be good trailers, Bring that's it. all I'm saying. What do you guys think is more disappointing, that Warner Brothers isn't putting anything in there, or the fact that Mark Ellis is so disappointed that I'm not going to watch the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> he I'm literally said, he said he's thinking about not watching the Super Bowl, I can't, which is crazy. I, I, I just can't watch. Matt Ryan has so that. many weapons to go against the Patriots. I just can't watch he could it. defeat I just the team can't, you don't like. I, I don't like the possibility of evil. All right, let's get to the next one. What's, what's the next one? Okay, last night, the 23rd Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards were handed out live on TBS and TNT from the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. In the film category, SAG showed some love to Denzel Washington for Best Actor for Fences, Emma Stone for Best Actress for La La Land, Mahershala Ali for Best Supporting Actor for Moonlight, and Viola Davis for Best Supporting Actress for Fences. While La La Land looks as though it will be a massive favorite on Oscar night and in other awards, it didn't receive a SAG nomination for Best Ensemble, the equivalent to Best picture. Instead, the SAG Award for Best Ensemble went to Hidden Figures. Perry, thoughts on the SAG Award winners from last night? Oh, this makes me so happy. Just everyone who won, whether it was TV or film, just not that they don't seem genuinely happy at other awards, something about the atmosphere and the the environment and the reaction. Oh, it made me feel so good. I know movies, but TV really, really quickly. Stranger Things, <laughs> oh my God, when they all got up and the kids were freaking out and Winona Ryder's faces and his speech, everything about that was perfect. All right. The big thing that is a surprise here is definitely Denzel Washington because that seriously screws with the best actor race now because it's going to be tough to make a prediction because Casey Affleck was the front runner, and I think the stat for somebody – Winning, winning SAG, but not winning the Best Actor didn't ha- it, it only happened four times in history, and it's been 13 years since that happened. Mm. So that'd be a pretty major change if Casey Affleck now won the Best Actor award after Denzel won the SAG one. So I'm curious to see how that shapes out. And then them. Oh my God! That I think that was my that was my favorite moment in the whole thing. The Hidden Figures cast winning ensemble, which again was a surprise because I was pretty sure Moonlight was going to take it. And it was probably important to note that even though they won the ensemble award and whoever won the ensemble award, that doesn't you know hold much value in terms of making your predictions for Best Picture because it it's a completely different ball game there. But Though th- that was my favorite moment. And even just look, I can't stop scrolling through Instagram and looking at pictures of the three of them just like hugging and being happy up there. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's funny you say that too because I th- I was thought of you because the fact that you love La La Land's like one is your favorite, oh. right? Oh, it's my favorite. So yeah. I so the fact that it didn't La La Land is not an ensemble film. I, that's okay. Yeah. I agree with you. And you know, I- a good actually a good stat. Um so La La Land won the PGA Award this okay. weekend. It's got a good chance of winning Best Picture. If it wins Best Picture, right. that'll mark the – where is my stat? Sorry, guys. So if it wins Best Picture, it'll be the first time – it'll be the first movie ever to do that without even getting a SAG Ensemble nomination, yes, it's which is kind of crazy. I think, to me, Hidden Figures is the one. If you're going Ensemble – 
as definition of ensemble, that everything around the board from the ladies involved, mm -hmm. Kevin Costner, uh, it, it was absolutely an ensemble piece and should have won out of all the other ones that were nominated. Even though say, I would make the same argument with Moonlight to where I thought there was a lot in, because you get three different stories. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's it's tricky in how it's all defined, but I would say f the way that it all came together, Hidden Figures was the one absolutely goat. Now, move into Best Actor. I'm not that shocked, to be honest, because I think that if you look at Best Actor, when people ask, who do you think is going to win? It's either Casey Affleck or Denzel Washington. It's one. Of, they're they're take, it's they're like two fighters that are just they they one wins one, one wins the other. Who's going to win the big fight uh, when we get to the Oscars? I don't know. I would say because of this right now, the momentum kind of shifts a little bit towards Denzel. It's possible. I also wouldn't be shocked if Casey Affleck wound up taking it. But I, I don't know. I just think right now. The momentum is shifting towards Denzel, so I'm going to give him the slight nod over Casey Affleck, even though I think they both did tremendous jobs. Um, yeah, those are the ones that, that really stood out to me. Mark, how about you? I didn't watch much of the show, but from what I saw, I was really happy with it because I usually don't like when like every speech is politically charged, but I thought the, the, the winners did a really good job with it last night, particularly David Harbour and Mahersha Ali and Julia Louis-Dreyfus, too. They were funny, but they were also poignant. As far as the awards themselves go, Denzel was the biggest surprise to me. I wasn't necessarily necessarily upset with it. I think that that's, it makes it more fun to talk about the best actor award at the Oscars because you're right. Now we have three heavyweights that could all take that trophy home. Um, hidden figures winning the best ensemble makes sense to me. That or Moonlight should have won over La La Land for what we're talking about. Just because the best ensemble is used as a predictor for best picture, Perry's right. It's a much different category from what you're getting with a best picture at the Oscars. So it makes it more fun now for us because we get to see people that we didn't think we would see standing on that stage and so all of a sudden there's going to be a lot more buzz going into the Oscars which I think the Oscars likes. Well, that's brief, the point. Co brief correction yeah. though I misspoke. If La La wins Best Picture it'll be the first one to do so without Best Ensemble since Braveheart so it's still Braveheart. a great feat. Yeah. It's been a while. Braveheart wasn't nominated for Best Ensemble there's like a hundred Scottish dudes in there. Well I mean look that that's the point though is that this Oscars to me if you look at all the categories there aren't as many clear-cut, oh, that's definitely winning. I mean, mm -hmm. I think La La Land probably has the, the most of that, but even whether or not people are now coming out, I, I think that any time a movie's really popular, people speak out and go, oh, I don't like it anymore. It's like, why? Because th th they don't like it. Uh, okay. Um, but I think that happens with, e with every movie, whether it's Titanic, The Force Awakens, whatever it is, that, that, that hap Avatar, that happens. But the, um, what I think that it does do is because, like you said, with that ensemble fact, it changes it up a little bit. What if they don't win. That would be a shocker. The, now you have Denzel Washington versus uh, Affleck to where that's going to be interesting. The best supporting actor could be interesting. I think, that, I mean, the only one I think right now that is a one, the two that seem to be locks, I would say, are Viola Davis and Emma Stone. Those no. are... Mahersha, I'm going to say it right. Mahersha Locke. Damn it. Oh, <laughs> you, you got in your head. You think, you, think Sorry. A, you think he's a lock? Um, yeah. I okay. think the three of them have okay. their respective acting categories. Yeah, I mean, um, I just think that if anybody, he's going to have a lot harder of a fight than Viola Davis and Emma Stone. That's are have. that's fair. That's I, I, I still think the three of them are probably the front runners. Yeah, I think this was uh, Denzel's first SAG win nice. ever. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's next? Okay, it's Monday, which means it's time for the weekend box office report brought to you by AMC Theaters. M. Night Shyamalan's split dominated its second weekend at the box office with $26.26 million and number one at the box office, dropping only 34% in its second weekend of release. Universal's A Dog's Purpose overcame some controversy in its opening weekend and took the number two spot with $18.38 million. In the number three and four spots come Hidden Figures and new release Resident Evil, the final chapter. Hidden Figures and narrowly beat the sixth movie in the Resident Evil franchise with $14 million, with Resident Evil The Last Chapter's number four spot taking in $13.85 million. And at number five was this year's frontrunner at the Oscars, La La Land. The movie pulled in $12 million this weekend with its domestic total now at $106.5 million. Mark, were you surprised that Split took the number one spot again at the weekend box office? I was not surprised, Natasha. I was actually very happy to see that news. And sorry, kids, looks like we're not going to get another XXX movie. 
Sorry. Aww. Or maybe even another Resident Evil movie. I mean, besides the fact that it's called the final chapter, we never really thought it was the final chapter, but it is the lowest return of any opening weekend for a Resident Evil film, which is shocking to me because it still made $13 million. That's more than I thought it would make. Wow, Wow Land and Hidden Figures, you expect those movies to do well around this time because there's award season and everybody's buzzing about them. A Dog's Purpose, I think, might have had an easy time overtaking Split if you didn't have all that controversy in that awful TMZ video that got leaked. I think that really turned a lot of people, including myself, to some degree off to the movie where not everybody wants to rush out and see a dog movie, which otherwise a lot of kids you would think would want to go see that family style film. Look, you put a pug on a poster, you're getting 20 million opening weekend. Right. Um, but it's, when it's whether or not, maybe not everybody knew that's about that. That's false them. advertising. There's no pug in the movie. Well, may, may, but the, I know, but that's, weird. That's, that's my point, <laughs> right? That's my point is that you go, you just put them on there and people aren't paying attention to the controversy. They're going, oh, a pug, a dog. Let's go see dogs. Oh, yeah. And then they cry the whole movie and they go, why did we see that? Uh -huh. um, but Split is the one. I'm not surprised if you, now, if we're going back two months ago, and you told me Split was coming out, <laughs> and then you said, oh, it's going to be the box office champion for two weeks in a row, I'd say you're crazy. But after seeing the movie and knowing what it did at its first weekend, it doesn't surprise me at all that it was number two mm -hmm. because more people are talking about it. And I, the same conversation I had with Dennis a while ago, he, everyone was, was buzzing about it. He was like, I wasn't going to see it, and then I wanted to figure out what's going on. Shyamalan, when he's at his best, is able to do that, and he got people in the theater. So the one that really stands out to me, though, is La La Land again because it's, it, you always get these movies – that once you get closer to Oscars, and the one that's getting all the buzz continues to just tack on money. Another 11, 12 million, whatever it made, 12 million. That's adding to its, to its take. I mean, the movie has been very successful financially. It has been very successful critically, and it could have a nice award season. So that's the one that stood out. Resident Evil, get it out of there. I've been saying it for a, for a long time now. We don't need it anymore. We're done with it. I didn't even need to see the movie. I could tell you exactly what's going to happen. You've been taking happen. a stand against Resident Evil films for quite some time. Who cares? No, right. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's, uh, what do you got? Yeah, this is almost how I thought it was going to shake out I, in my predictions. I'm so mad. I haven't gotten five out of five in forever. But, it, you know, these three are pretty close, so that's my excuse. I did think La La Land was going to come in third because that's the one that got, I, I think, a thousand plus more theaters, whereas Hidden Figures didn't, which is pretty damn incredible for Hidden Figures. The fact that it's been holding on so strong for so long, I mean, that movie has... Over, it's got over 104 million at the domestic box office right now on a 25 million dollar budget. That is that is one heck of an accomplishment. When this wasn't really on anyone's radar to this extent back in in November December, and you know even even though I have strong feelings against a dog's purpose, it's really not that bad of a start for the movie. It only cost 22 no, totally. to make, but damn, M Night Shyamalan is in a good place right now. That one cost $9 million to make, and it is just, like, crushing it right now. It's creeping close to $80 million domestic, and yeah. I don't think this movie is going anywhere until we get another horror release. Right. Um, okay, now, before we move on to buy or sell, we have to bring up the loss of John Hurt. I, when I heard the news, of, of, of course, I was... Anytime you hear these, the, the news that you're losing someone of his talent, of his gravitas, everything about the man, whether it's Elephant Man or the Harry Potter films, um, V for Vendetta, all these movies that he was a part of, there was just something about John Hurt, a uh, classic, uh, just a classic actor and there was just a respect that he brought when you talked about him he was royalty in the world of acting so losing him it's never easy when you when you lose somebody not only uh, someone of his talent but just uh, from all reports of the, the type of human being that he was you know this is it's you don't want to lose somebody like that uh, at all you especially don't want to lose him uh, when uh, times like we are in now. He's just such really great. He was a really great dude. Again, from reports that we heard. And Mark, you hear about the, the passing of John Hurt. How'd you feel? Yeah, I mean, my, my first thought is that when you lose an acting legend like that, you think about their most famous work and the ones that really spoke to you as a child. And that would obviously be alien for me, but you shouldn't also forget the person that he was and what a sense of humor he brought right. to every set he was on because he also appeared in Spaceballs as the guy who has an alien pop out of his chest. So it was really nice to see him be able to wink and nod to his career and also celebrate it along with us what we're doing here post-mortem today. Perry? Yeah, I, I'm kind of sick of these kinds of stories at this point. It gets harder and harder to talk about it because it just feels like, like we're not even just losing people that we love in the moment. It's, it's people that I guess I've almost taken for granted. It 
they've just always <laughs> been there and always been in the movies that I loved and have always been delivering such incredible work that when this happens, it, it almost takes a, an extra long amount of time to process what just happened and the extreme loss that we're experiencing. So I'm just so incredibly sad. The first thing I did when this ha when I heard the news is I watched Snowpiercer because, you yeah. know, just to name drop one of his more recent films, mm -hmm. an incredible one. So if you want to revisit something, I'd recommend that. And 1984. Check it out for a That's lot right. of reasons. Oh, great. Uh, again, we uh, John Hurt will be missed. And there's no other easy, easy way to segue to buy or sell. Mm -hmm. it, we are now going to, Natasha is going to read more of the topics in the world of movie news, and we're going to buy or sell them. Natasha, what's up first? THI reports that Stranger Things Millie Bobby Brown has been cast in her first film role, signing on to, to star in Godzilla, King of the Monsters, legendary sequel to its 2014 creature feature. Michael Doherty is directing the project, which he also co-wrote with Zach Shields, his partner on Legendary's horror movie Krampus. King of Monsters is part of the new monster cinematic universe that also includes Kong Skull Island. Kong is due to hit theaters March 10th, while King of Monsters is scheduled for a release on March 22nd, 2019. Christian Byer sell Millie Bobby Brown starring in Godzilla, King of Monsters. Yeah, I'm going to buy this. And look, when we talked about Michael Doherty directing, I was, sell I'm, was selling it, and I'm still not convinced with him yet on Krampus and Trick or Treat. I, I, I don't know yet to see what kind of – sorry, Perry, it hasn't proved anything yet. As far I'll give you a pass on Krampus, trick not Trick or Treat. Mm -hmm. Trick or Treat it might be a fine movie, but it doesn't – Have you ever seen it? Uh, no, I didn't see the movie, <laughs> but, but what I'm saying I'm, – what I'm saying is it might be I'm, a – but it might I'm be gonna fine. give you my DVD. I Please don't watch know yet it. if that means if I don't know yet if that means he can take care of Godzilla. And I saw Krampus, and if that's the indication, I'm scared. And he also wrote it with this guy, so I'm scared. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown. And I just like saying Millie Bobby Brown. Um, <laughs> she is a good actress, and she really brought a lot to that character uh, of eleven. Not six, Very like good. Perry said earlier today. Um, Who uh, said that? Uh, that would be me. Uh, but, <laughs> like I said, I like Millie Bobby Brown, and I think that uh, to have her in there, and especially, this is going to be a couple years, too. She's going to have a couple more projects under her belt. This, going back to what I was saying about Doherty, if you start casting people that, ha you're not just getting stars, you're getting people that, whether it's rising stars or people who've got the talent, that's going to definitely help the cause, because you're going to see she's and this goes back to another conversation we had the other day about she, this this actress who she'll take probably smaller roles to build up her career she'll t she'll do stranger things season 2 she'll do a bigger movie like this this is how you start to get in the the eye the public eye more people who didn't maybe watch stranger things but now they'll know her because of <coughs> of Godzilla so i think this is a really good ad a huge buy i'm a big big fan of stranger things and I'm really confident that, because, you know, a lot of times when a young actor in particular comes out and they've got this hot property and then it disappears and the actor goes away, she's exceptional in yeah. Stranger Things. I mean, it's probably not new news to anyone who has watched it and actually just, I mean, looked at the nuance in that performance. She is really freaking talented. And I'm clearly a bigger uh, Mike Dougherty fan than you are. Yep. But I'll give you that on Krampus. It, it, not his best work. I had a lot of fun with it, and it's a little alarming because that was essentially a monster movie, and now he's going to another monster movie. But I, I'm, I, I think I have faith in him. And with her on the cast, and then uh, Walton Goggins, right. ah, yeah, bring it on. What about you? Uh, the huge buy for me right now is a new trick-or-treat viewing party at Perry's brand-new apartment. Yep. Yeah. You got the new place. We're going to be watching it. Christian has to go. Dewey's always having guests. I'd rather watch the Super Bowl. Ah, uh, no. well, yeah, so would I. <laughs> um, I don't, I mean, yeah, it's a buy. It's not like, I'm not like over the moon about it. She yeah. was great in Stranger Things. I love that show, but we're talking about Godzilla, the king of all monsters. That's why I'm going to see the movie. I'm going to see the movie so I can see that badass and then he, him and training to go up against King Kong, who will ultimately defeat Godzilla because King Kong is just too athletic and too powerful of a beast for King Kong, even though King Kong, even though, excuse me, Godzilla has a lot of abilities with the fire breathing and whatnot. Let's not forget the last time a huge TV star coming off a great TV show performance was cast in a Godzilla movie, Brian Cranston. Anybody go see Godzilla because Brian Cranston was in it? I hope you didn't because you'd probably leave a little disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go see this movie because you love Stranger Things. See it because it's Godzilla, damn it. Whoa, that's a, that's a <laughs> statement. All right, ladies. 
What do you guys think? Is, is this Millie Bobby Brown? Is that good to put her in this? Millie Bobby Brown. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I totally <laughs> buy. One, I love Stranger Things and Millie Bobby Brown, of course. Um, but two, I love giant CGI monsters. Yeah, I just nice. do. And um, seeing King Kong in the Skull Island trailer, I'm just so excited for it. So I'm looking forward to that movie. And if it does well, and then Millie Bobby Brown's added to the next one. Mm -hmm. I totally buy So much it. fun to say her name. Yeah. Uh, Millie Wendy. Bobby Brown. <laughs> um, and I have to agree with you, Ellis, that if anyone went to see the previous Godzilla film because of Brian Cranston, um, definitely not a good enough reason to see it because they probably maybe left the theater about 10 minutes in. <laughs> um, spoilers. So <laughs> I am not going to go see Godzilla because Millie Bobby Brown. I'm seeing like she, this bonus that she's in the film because I do love her, but I am so excited to see more kaiju. Yay. Oh, all right. Natasha. What is next? Okay, THR reports that Dominic West will play Lara Croft's father in the new reboot of Tomb Raider. The movie follows Lara Croft on her first adventure as she tries to complete Lord Richard Croft's research by uncovering a number of ancient secrets while also trying to clear her father's good name. Tomb Raider stars Alicia Vikander as Lara Croft and has recently started production. The movie is set for release on March 16, 2018. Mark Byersell, Dominic West as Lara Croft's father in Tomb Raider. Oh, speaking of casting, that just ain't going to get me out of bed in the morning. I'll buy it. Uh, you know, he's a good actor. He's going to be fine as the dad. Is this supposed to get me excited, though? Am I like, oh, you know, I wasn't going to go see Lara Croft already, but Dominic West is the dad. I don't know how prominent a role the dad is going to have in this. It appears if you're casting Dominic West that there might be some action for him to do. So that gets me a little bit more excited about seeing the film. But I was already on board with this because I'm such a huge fan of Alicia Vikander taking on the role of Lara Croft. Anybody else to this cast is just icing on the cake. Who peed in your baby carrots today? I'm fine. Oh, I'm just. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna be like, oh, sweet. Well, because your Dominic West is playing a dad. Woo! <laughs> bye, big bye. Hey, you guys hear that Dominic West will be playing the dad? Bye. And a kid's gonna be in Godzilla. Uh, yes. I'll tell you why I buy it is because I loved The Wire. I really enjoy the affair. This the, this dude is a really good actor, and I think anytime you add talent, it is gonna get that. By. Plus the fact that he has played her dad before. The testimony to youth was uh, he he had Ooh, yeah good you see you there. like that yeah they, well they he was he was her dad they have the chemistry already I also like the fact that they already said they're going to go more to the roots where she's searching for her father they have the chemistry he's really he, I mean he's not going to be a huge part in the movie but he's but he's someone that when you add it. You're not rushing out to the theater to see Dominic no, West as Mr. Croft. The story, you but know? they're doing the spinoff of Mr. Croft. It's going to be coming out pretty <laughs> Papa soon. Papa Croft. Yeah, Papa Croft. But, you know, and, and, the, and that will have a young Millie Bobby Brown. But uh, it, it, is, it, is going, it is going to have Dominic West. I think it adds. Anytime you add talent, it works. Perry? Yeah, I'm brain farting all over the place today. Uh, Walton Goggins is the villain in this, not Godzilla. Oh. <laughs> so, but, right. but oh, really, well, I'm, I'm taking back my tickets know, to really. go see Godzilla now. Right. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, well, I think, is Millie Bobby Brown the first one to be cast in that? I don't even know. Uh, this cast, though, has me excited. Yeah. I'm happy that Dominic West is in it. I like him. Is it... I wouldn't say it's making me more hype than I was right. before. This movie is Alicia Vikander's movie and, and Walton Goggins' movie. But I don't <laughs> think the question on the table is, are you getting excited now because he's in it? Well, it's like, does it, does it add to the talent? There is one major reason I'm excited about this movie, and it's because the guy who's directing it did The Wave, Roar Utah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That that movie is one of, one of, it didn't crack my top ten last year. One of my favorite movies, though, of 2016, if you haven't seen The Wave, and, and are not excited for this Tomb Raider, go watch The Wave, and I guarantee you, you will be a million times more hyped for this movie. Yeah. I'm on the IMDb page right yes, now. Sir. Millie Bobby Brown is not the first person to be cast in Godzilla, King of All Godzilla Monsters. was first. Yes, he was. That's ah, a fair point. See? I know you so well, Man. buddy. I know you so well. All right, what's, what's next? Okay. <laughs> Universal Pictures has released the first clip for Fifty Shades Darker. Jamie Dornan and Dakota Johnson return as Christian Grey and Anastasia Steele in the second chapter based on the worldwide Fifty Shades phenomenon. Expanding upon the events set in motion from 2015's blockbuster film that grossed more than $560 million globally, the new installment arrives this Valentine's Day and features a a wounded Christian Grey as he tries to entice a cautious Anna Steele back into his life. Fifty Shades Darker opens in theaters on February 10th, 2017. Perry, you're the lucky gal. Buy or sell the new clip for Fifty Shades Darker. 
uh, just before you do that, I, I'm I'm well, four years old. I, uh, what is happening I, in that picture? I just no, I mean, I, it just looks. Like she's in an elevator, so the first thing I think is that she just had you know she's letting off gas. I'm three years old. I'm three. I mean, I really am. You look at a picture that looks like she's relieving herself. It doesn't look anything exciting at all. I'm sorry. That's who I, I am. Would, I would look Deal at elevators as like one of the few places in life you really try not to fart. You seem to enjoy oh, farting boy. in elevators. It, I, I'm not saying I enjoy you it, but she looks like she's having a blast. I, I mean, it, it, all right, literally. Okay, wait, all right, what's, so sorry, what's, she's what's, having what's, a blast? Literally. She, she's relieving herself, yeah. and he's checking her out. Right. He's like, yeah. is she going to do it, too? Yeah. I mean, come on. All right, yeah. sorry. All right. right. What do you think about this classic piece? Get a load of that cougar in the elevator? Yeah. I think I have to buy this. I actually liked the first Fifty Shades movie more than most, and I think people need to give it some credit, because it was a pretty, it was a well-done movie, and I thought I thought Stop. she's great in it. I, I really like Dakota Johnson as an actress. But the point is, this clip serves its purpose. Anyone who is even the slightest bit interested in seeing this movie is going to watch this clip and say to themselves, I will get what I want from this movie. I will go see it. I don't disagree with you. I think it's a stupid clip. Uh, <laughs> I think the movie's going to be stupid. I think I'm going to sell the clip because I just don't like dumb things. But I, I, I will tell you, though, you're absolutely right. What I will say about this movie, I didn't think the first one was well made at all. I thought it was an absolute trash piece. But what I, what I will say about the movie is that the first one, it was built and sold on sex, and it was probably the, it was the least sexiest movie I've ever seen in my life. It, was, it wasn't. This clip, though... Well, maybe like, well, we're going to make up for that in this one. I mean, because you could see, minus the farting in the elevator, it actually, it's, it's supposed to be like a sexy <laughs> clip. And I can understand what people would think that maybe it is if you like this type of smut. So uh, what, what do you think? I, it, it's, I, I have to agree with Perry simply because I don't look at <laughs> elevators as opportunities to let off gas after lunch. Like, like, like this guy will walk into buildings that he is not authorized to be That's in. That's the spot! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and then you run in the other direction. It's like just a guy with a mask on riding a red X on elevators across town. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the Taco Bell bandit, Christian Harlow. That's going to be the next behind-the-scenes question. Where do you go to secretly fart so no one notices? There she is. That's her. Yeah. I mean, look, if I'm in my car by myself, yeah, let it rip. Let's have some fun. Let's see what I had for dinner What's last What's the music night? playing yeah. during the rip? Oh, my God. All right, ladies, how would you feel about this wonderful uh, classical oh music? Oh, my God. That was just you getting so, like, <laughs> hyped on the farting. <laughs> That's my favorite part about this fire cell topic. Um, okay, so I, yeah, I don't like the Fifty Shades um, franchise, even though I kind of agreed to do a commentary with Michael Rappaport. But, but is, um, this, is this sexy I, I or offensive? To me, it's offensive, okay. personally. I just don't, um, I don't agree with the story or their relationship or anything. Um, so I haven't watched the first one. So yeah, I don't okay. know. I just think it's weird. I don't. I don't really like Dakota Johnson, anyways. Too. So yeah, I Wendy, don't know. not a fan. Uh, I would disagree with you on Dakota. I do like her, and I thought her performance in the first movie was actually not bad. It exceeded my expectations because I like had zero expectation for that first movie. Um, with that said, I agree with you. Um, this trailer is not for me because I'm not into the franchise. Yeah. I saw it and I felt like I really wasted like a minute 30 watching that. I will tell you that I think that if they would have released, if this scene or this clip would have been in the first movie, I think that it, it just plays more to what everyone thought it was going to be around. But because a lot of us had such a bad experience with the first movie, it's just like the same old nonsense. Um, Okay, now that's it for buy or sell. <laughs> Time to talk about what the hell we've got going on here at Collider Video. And before we do that, make sure that you guys, we're going to do some live Twitter questions like we always do. And Wendy Lee will be going through those. So make sure you uh, hashtag that hashtag. That would be stupid. Just do at Collider Video. Hashtag, hashtag will get, fun, yeah. Yeah, hashtag yeah. will be fun. You get the yeah. conversation going. But if you want to get the question out there, it's at Collider Video. Just do it. Don't do it while. In an elevator. Now we're going to get to <laughs> some of the stuff going on today. We have Collider Crash Course. This is one of my favorite ones that have been done so far. It's the history of Batman in film, and it's part one. John Schnapp hosted it. If you guys want to know how all the, the Batman characters came to be in the film universe, go ahead and check that out. It's a lot of fun. We also dropped the Schmodown, Sam Levine versus Mark Riley. That was up on Friday. But we also have the team match coming up on Tuesday, and it is a team breakup match, meaning either the Wangers or Real Rejects will split up as a team. Go and check that out on Tuesday when it drops. We have a behind 
behind the scenes and blooper series that just started. Over 30,000 of you guys have already watched that. If you want to see kind of what's happening, the inner workings of Collider and some fun little bits with Perry, um, it's really cool. We're going to be doing that every week. That will be on Saturdays, so check that out. TV Talk will drop a little later today at 5 p.m., and Roxy Stryer will actually be hosting that show. Makuga's out today. Roxy Stryer will be the host. So if you want to go check out TV Talk, you should do it. 5 p.m., get caught up on all the latest in TV. And lastly, make sure you check out Awesome Tacular with a new episode coming out this Friday, only on Verizon Go 90. Free show, and it's a lot of fun. It's like a new variety show with Jeremy Johns. It's really cool. I'm going to be doing a new Star Wars kind of speculation piece on that show. So go and do it. Some fun games. Do it! All right. Uh, <laughs> let's get to mailbag. Natasha, what's up first? Okay. Brian writes, currently only the best picture category has more than five nominations. Do you see a time where the Academy will increase the number of nominations in other categories like best actor, actress, director to acknowledge other great performances like they did when they changed best picture? Moreover, do you think they should add more nominations for diversity's sake? Thanks for answering. It's a great question. Um, I don't think they're going to do it. I think that I don't know. It's just the way that they, they, it's been built into the system. It is a great opportunity for more, more diversity, but also want to make sure that a lot of the votes don't get split. It's it's really it, it's tough. I think it's easier to do it with the movies coming out because even though you know certain movies aren't going to win, to get the nomination kind of helps the cause. I don't know, Perry. How do you feel about it? I was actually talking to Adam from Dot Com about this, and first of all, it doesn't seem like it would ever happen because. Part of the reason why they did that with Best Picture is to increase the show ratings so right. that more people will have seen more of the movies. I don't think that really panned out the way that they hoped. Then there's also the issue of the show running time. The second you double the nominees, imagine how many more minutes you add to that ceremony. And then there's the issue of the fact that it would take away from the prestige of a nomination. As much as I want to honor everybody and you know give them all the accolades... At the same time, you can't really do that or it won't be so special anymore. I, I don't really care about the prestige from a competitive standpoint, though. You know, I mean, I, I think it's great if more people get Oscar nominations. What's the problem with that going to be? Like, are you going to be hiring people based on nominations and be like, oh, you know what? We got sold a false bill of goods. Like, like if I'm if I'm if Perry and I are at a bar and we're arguing about who the better, you know, uh, uh, baseball player is we, that we might factor in if you're in the Hall of Fame or not. But if we're arguing the best actress of all time and you say Julia Roberts and I say Viola Davis, we're not really going to trudge out like when they're we're, we're gonna fight about the best movies they were in as opposed to how many times actually got nominated for an oscar i think something they could look at is not doing a set amount of slots but doing like a percentile like if you have to get 80 percent of the vote to get nominated you have to get 70 percent. so that means some years you could have 10 best actor competitors and other years you could have six best actor competitors as opposed to just the crude it's either five or ten maybe just make it flexible based on how many people actually think you deserve a nomination think about how many trailers out there though before they say a name it's always academy award nominee <laughs> academy award winner and really every single time you read an article if it's a casting article, it's always written, Academy Award, blah, 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 this person, you know? So, you're going to be more reading in trailers. I so will give you the that. So the next time I'm in a bar and I'm arguing the best actor or actress, <laughs> I'm going to throw that in there, and then I'm just going to squash the competition. <laughs> All right, what's next? Jimmy writes, hey, Movie Talk team, quick question. I know it's not really a surprise that Deadpool wasn't nominated for Best Picture, but with nominations for PGA and Writers Guild and the fact that there are a total of 10 allotted nominations allows for Best Best Picture. Do you think Deadpool was a legit snub this year for Best Picture? I totally think it should have been nominated just like The Dark Knight, and I can see similarities here. Love to hear your thoughts. I do not think it was a snub that it got nom that didn't get nominated for Best Picture. I was very surprised it didn't get nominated for Best Screenplay. I, I thought it was definitely... I was, I was ready to come in here bragging like, I told you guys, I told you... But it didn't happen. I was actually really surprised it didn't get nominated for screenplay because I thought because of all the hype that it did have for whether some people thought it was going to win Best Picture or not, it had enough conversation behind it that something I thought would get nominated. It would be very interesting and a, and a new statement that certain genre movies might get nominated besides just special effects and sound. Um, but Best Picture? No, I never really thought that had a chance or what was going to happen. I just, thought, uh, I just thought there were a lot of movies that were better 
and more deserving. Um, I certainly like Deadpool. I liked it a lot. But I, out of all the other movies, I know that we have a, a fan base that is very genre oriented and really wants to root for these movies. And I think you should root for these movies. But if you put them next to some of these other movies that did get nominated, the ones that are in there, I don't think there's any movie in there that got nominated that was better than Deadpool, uh, that wasn't better than Deadpool to be nominated for an Oscar. How'd you feel? Uh, Christian, as someone who got cut from their sixth grade basketball team, I take snubs very seriously. Yeah. That's a strong word in my family. And Deadpool, you did not get snubbed. It's a bummer you didn't get nominated. It right. would have been cool. It would have been a nice step forward for the comic book world. But you did not necessarily deserve. I look at a snub as when you actually were so good you deserve to be nominated. So there's some movies that I think could have earned that, like Silence or Nocturnal Animals or Edge of Seventeen. Those movies, I think, earned that right more so than Deadpool. It would have been cool to see Deadpool get nominated. And when Perry and I and Campy were up at 5 in the morning to watch yeah. that happen, they left a little bit of a pregnant pause for the last Best Picture spot. We're like, is it, is it going to be Deadpool? And there was just nothing there. Yeah. Uh, so it would have been cool, but no, it's not a snub. Yeah, uh, Jimmy kind of answered the question with saying that I know it's not really a surprise because if it's not really a surprise, it's just not a snub. That's right. the definition of a snub. I am disappointed, though. I was pulling for it. You know, the second it started to get all these surprise Guild nominations, I thought it really... I thought there could have been the slightest chance that this movie could walk away with an Oscar nomination. And I actually think, even though I think all the, uh, the writing nominees are fantastic... I thought this kind of deserved it because since all this awards talk started, I rewatched Deadpool twice. It really is an exceptionally well written movie. Mm -hmm. So if it had snuck in there, I think it would have deserved it. Yeah, snub to me is Amy Adams for Arrival, mm -hmm. which was the best movie of the year. <laughs> all right, what? All right, now it's time actually for Twitter. You guys have been submitting your Twitter questions. Wendy's been going through them. Wendy, what do we got? First one comes from Rocky Brago sixty six. Who writes, Get Out is currently holding at 100% on Rotten Tomato. Oh. If it can hold this positive reception, what does it mean for its box office? Perry, what do you think? I have high hopes for this. I'm curious to see what the marketing campaign looks yeah. like leading up to the release. You know, I'm trying to think of the other genre, horror genre movies coming out next month. I, I don't think Rings is going to pose much of a threat. I don't think A Cure for what? Wellness is going to have enough crossover. <laughs> I think Split will be well on its way out. I, this could be... And don't, make, don't hold me to this until I actually do my little nerdy Excel sheet calculations, but I feel like this could be heading towards at least a $20 million opening weekend. Ooh, Mark. that would be lovely because I'm really looking forward to this movie. I love the trailer. Jordan Peele taking the reins. I think that this movie is going to be a nice blend of horror, some comedy, a little bit of social commentary, all thrown in a blender together. And what I'm excited about with this film is that people really responded to horror movies, smaller horror movies, well, last year. You had good stuff like Lights Out and Don't Breathe, things like that, where I think it gets people reinvigorated. And Split coming out doing so well certainly is proof of that as well. So I think Get Out does have a good shot it has a lot of competition which you don't normally hear in february but i mean next weekend we're gonna have the lego movie coming out and john wick 2 and 50 shades stupider so there's a lot of movies coming out i just don't know the get out can compete with all that if it does 20 million dollars opening weekend i'm gonna be very very happy with that number i think get out will do well long in the long haul i think it's going to kind of pepper in money mm -hmm. throughout the weeks because i thought actually and i like the trailer a lot i'm happy to hear that so far people who have seen it are enjoying it whether it's the 80 percent on metacritic 100 percent on rotten tomatoes people are enjoying it and i'm glad because when that i didn't know what the hell the movie was and when the trailer i was like well that's cool and then you find out who wrote it and directed it mm -hmm. that makes it more interesting mm -hmm. because it also goes back to what we were talking about when um uh, who got, he, he didn't get cast in Predator, right? So Keegan. No, uh, it was uh, Keegan Michael. Keegan Michael Key, yeah. Key, right? But but anyway, so not Millie Bobby Brown. No, it wasn't <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown. But the fact we were just you know whether it's the Russo brothers or you know any anybody mm -hmm. who comes from one doesn't necessarily mean they can't do another genre. So this is why I'm very, I'm very intrigued to see mm -hmm. what he does, whether it's in writing. The trailer was great, so I hope that it actually does good box office, and it could with with good word of mouth. All right, Wendy, what's next? All right, this one comes from Sub Atomic Freak, who writes, yeah. one of my favorite actors is Jake Gyllenhaal. Why do you think he gets no respect from the Academy? I, I don't know. I don't think that he gets no respect. Well, I mean, he's not Ronnie Dangerfield. But <laughs> he I, I, totally could have gotten a nomination <laughs> this year, and the Nightcrawler thing is absurd. 
Yes. Look, the Nightcrawler thing, it was a stacked year, and somebody's going to get left out yeah. until he sh- he sh- he you have Paris six right, or seven or eight. Best he should have been in he there. Sh- he should have been nominated for that. So you're right. They hate him. <laughs> <laughs> um, all, all right, but we love you, Jake, I, so yeah, it's okay. I don't think they hate him at all. I think that he's just been on the outside <laughs> looking in at the number six or seven spot, which does not mean they hate you. It's just that there were five better performances right. in their eyes this year. You can argue or you can disagree with it, but I don't think he should have been nominated this year. I don't know. And just, I think Nightcrawler was, t- that, that was, that was a tough, tough year, but well, it was a really stacked from category. What, from what I hear, they can't get over Bubble Boy. All right, what's, uh, what's next? <laughs> Jonathan Peck writes, are you surprised or disappointed they didn't announce a Super Bowl teaser for Kong, uh, Dunkirk, and War for the Planet of the Apes? Uh, no, because I think we're going to get peppered with a lot of these anyway. Whether Kong's going to be in March, so the movie's going to be here soon. We don't necessarily need a trailer. I guess Warner Brothers didn't want to spend the money with a movie that they're going to have. It's, it's spent $5 million on a spot that you're going to get the movie out in March. Uh, Dunkirk, I don't necessarily know if, you know, in the middle of a Super Bowl thing, you know, putting a, a war trailer. I don't know. I, just, I don't think you necessarily needed to do that right there. I think the push will come for Dunkirk a little later. What do you think? Dunkirk seems unlikely to yeah. me for that reason. But, you know, it's only Monday. Just because we haven't gotten an announcement now doesn't mean we're not going to get it through the week. And this is the week that it starts to happen. I guarantee you, if not today, starting tomorrow, we're going to get some of those stupid 10-second clips that say, oh, right. big trailer coming this weekend. <laughs> and for all we know, every single title we've talked about today is not going to happen, and it'll be something different. Sure. It doesn't disappoint me because, I, look, I know I'm in the minority here. I'm a, I'm a square peg in a round hole. I'm an odd duck. I actually watch the Super Bowl because I want to watch the football game. I know, I know. It sounds old-fashioned. <laughs> That's why you should be tuning in, not for the stupid commercials or what? the movie trailer. Well, because think? let's think about this, too. A lot of ways movies like to make their announcement now is not within a 30 second window even teaser trailers are a minute long or a minute and a half long that's a lot of money when you can put it out for free on youtube and get arguably a better response with more of a stamp than you get on the super bowl because there's so many commercials and there's so many things people are talking about that day you want to stand out which is why i think it's a smart move for a movie like episode eight or even wonder woman to not want to be one of the many trailers why would you want to release your movie trailer and say okay let's put this out there and have a debate whether it's this or eight other movie trailers, which was the best one, as opposed to release it on a random Wednesday two weeks from now when you're the only game in town. All right, let's do two more. All right, John like Verge writes, uh, with Han Solo officially starting shooting, above or below 50% that any Rogue One characters appear? Oh, man. I'm, There's I'm a lot a, of characters. There are. I, I'm going to go under. I don't, I don't. I think that this this goes. We don't necessarily need to see the Rogue One characters right now in this movie. And I think you got to establish. You remember, you, you've got to get people comfortable with that. We have a brand new Han Solo. And then I'll tell you that I saw an interview with Donald Glover, and I. I mean, I had called him being Lando a long time ago. But man, if I, he he when he was he had an interview that he had did uh, he did at the Golden Globes and Sarah Paulson kind of did you see this interview she she rushed up and told him that Amanda Peet was a big uh, fan but he's just so smooth and I was like <laughs> uh, and it's the way that he carried himself I'm like yeah that's Lando and I want to see that more than I want to see and I know it could be cameos and stuff too but I don't think Rogue One characters are necessary for this. Yeah, it, it's a question of whether there's going to be a large imperial presence in Han Solo, and I don't think there is. I don't think there's going to be a lot of room for a Tarkin or a Krennic or a Vader or anybody like that. As far as the, the Rebellion team in Rogue One, you might ha- see Han Solo at a bar, and you might see Baze walk by in the background, and that'd be kind of a cool nod, but I, I don't need to see that. I don't think a lot of fans, like, whereas when we saw Rogue One, we were hoping from cameos from characters from the classic trilogy, I don't think we need to see Rogue One characters, and I think it might actually be a nice move for Han Solo to say we don't need to rely on anybody else in our movie. This is our movie. We're making it the way we want to, and they're going to have confidence going that way. If cameos count, I say over for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what they're establishing, and that's what they're establishing very well, is that they can hide little Easter eggs and little nuggets places. I mean, the fact that Chopper popped up in Rogue <laughs> One just right. made me so happy. I wouldn't mind seeing something like that in Han Solo. Here's the question. c 3 or R2-D2, they, 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 they haven't sat on the bench over. for a movie yet. Over. If it's, yeah. them, if it's them, I 90 Nine point nine percent that one of them will be will be yeah. in it for mm-hmm. sure, uh, but I wouldn't hate seeing a cameo. I just don't think it's going to happen. All right, last one. Last one comes from Phil Fang Foom, who writes, "What other properties or brands would you like to see Lego Taco now that they have a general Lego movie and Batman?" Mark, 
Um, I was reading the comments and did not hear one word of the question. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Which property or brand how should the Lego you, franchise tackle next? How you disrespect Fing Fang Fu? What how, was that? What was the question? <laughs> so, one more time for everybody. What <laughs> other properties or brands would you like to see Lego tackle now that they have a general Lego movie and Batman movie? Ah, okay. I mean, look, the obvious answer is Star Wars, but <laughs> I really like the Indiana Jones Lego game. That's a lot of fun to play. So I would not hate seeing Indiana Jones in Lego yeah. form. I don't think Star Wars is a never going to happen because remember they have the rights for they have the rights for the Lego stuff in Star Wars because they've used they used Star Wars in the first movie. They used they Billy used, D. They used Billy D. Williams in it. They had they, they put Lego Star Wars stuff out all the time. They had a Star Wars Lego show. I don't know what the actual deal is. I would assume that is probably not going to happen, yeah. but that's the one I'd want to see. I, I would imagine there has has yeah. to be extreme limitations on that. I think I'd want to see a, a pirate Lego movie yeah. because that was the first like huge Lego set I ever had was like the old school pirate ship. Ooh, and, that's a yeah. good one. I, if, if I could Fifty just Shades like, of Grey count. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Chris would like to see five Lego characters in an elevator. Yeah. Um, they all explode. I don't hate the idea. They have like brown, you know, like I would actually love to see this. Yeah, right. I wouldn't not? hate the idea of a Back to the Future story with Lego characters. I think that might be a fun be way cool. to do Back to the Future yeah. again. The only way to do Back to the Future again. And that is everything today on Collider Movie Talk, guys. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to thank everybody who joined us today. First. Perry Nemiroff, where can they find you? You guys can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at P. Nemiroff. Collider Nightmares every Wednesday. Our brand new show, Collider Behind the Scenes, every Saturday. And that's it. Millie Bobby Brown. That's right. Marcus <laughs> Aurelius Ellis, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me this Wednesday night on the Schmoes No Live Show. Sipping a Capri Sun. We kick off at 7 p.m. PST. We have a cavalcated special guest. We're going to be talking about some Sundance. And you can find me on Twitter at Mark Ellis Live. The table over over there, over there. It's Natasha Martinez. Where can they find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Natasha Lexus underscore. And Miss Wendy Lee. You can find me on YouTube at the Movie Couple Channel and on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. And you can find me, Christian Harloff, at Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you check out Jedi Council, the Schmodown, all that stuff. Just click like, do comments. That's all we ask you for. Just do that. If you're watching right now, you're watching live, throw in that like. You're watching live, throw in a comment. You're not watching live, do the same thing. It all applies to everyone. <laughs> all right, get back to those elevators, and we'll see you next time on Movie Talk. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.